सो हेलो व्हाट्सअप आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग ग्रेट वेलकम टू द अल्ट्रा पैक्ड पावर पैक्ड रिवीजन ऑफ एस ए फाइव सेवेंटी गोइंग कंसर्न सर इन दिस एस ए वी जस्ट नीड टू टेक केयर अबाउट टू थिंग्स ऑडिटर्स रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी एंड द रिपोर्टिंग पार्ट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ गोइंग कंसर्न गोइंग कंसर्न मीन्स एंटिटी विल कंटिन्यू इट्स ऑपरेशन फॉर अ फोर्सिबल फ्यूचर कम ऑन entity will continue its operations for a foreseeable future generally all the financial statements that are prepared they are prepared as per the going concern basis of accounting but when it comes to special purpose financial statement that we will discuss in sa 800 series they say that these may or may not be prepared as per going concern it is the choice of the entity and when i say going concern basis is appropriate what does it mean entity will be able to realize the assets and pay off the liabilities in normal course of business is this point clear yes sir when i talk about auditor's responsibility before that it comes management responsibility whose responsibility it is to assess the going concern management responsibility they have to assess the going concern at a particular point in time sir when i am assessing have do i have to consider the future events yes sir am i required to make some judgment yes sir while making this judgment i need to consider three factors very very simple first of all whose assessment is done entity's assessment so you need to consider the nature of the entity that is size and complexity of entity that is the psycho entity since you are assessing going concern you need two degrees sir what is the two degree degree to which this entity is affected by the external factors come on degree to which the entity is affected by the external factors and the second point is degree of uncertainty uncertainty about the future events and condition uncertainty about the future events and condition and the third point is also event third point is also about the event which event subsequent event that means the judgment is done at a point in time after this point there may be a subsequent event which can prove this judgment wrong which can prove this judgment wrong which can result in a outcome inconsistent with the judgment inconsistent with the judgment that were made at the point of time is this point clear yes sir three points psycho entity two types of two types of degrees degree to which it is affected by external factors degree of uncertainty and the last point about subsequent events very very good now sir auditor's responsibility is a two stage responsibility first of all today then tomorrow first of all today then tomorrow today see whether the going concern is appropriate or not then see whether in future there is a material uncertainty that can cast a significant doubt on entity's ability to continue as a going concern but remember sa 200 remember sa 200 there were four other factors in inherent limitation fraud related party non compliance with laws and regulations and going concern in these cases the inherent limitations impact is a lot so as a auditor you should stay alert as a auditor what you need to do we need to stay <coughs> alert you need to stay alert to make sure you are able to identify such events and condition plus in my audit report if there is no reference to uncertainty or a material uncertainty does it mean it is a guarantee that entity will continue as a going concern the answer is no there is no guarantee by any auditor now sir comes the next part very easy easy part risk assessment procedure when i am performing the risk assessment procedure trying to understand whether there is any event or condition that may cast significant doubt on entity's ability to continue as going concern how will i identify i said why you want to identify management has already performed the going concern assessment ask them inquire from the management if they have performed the assessment did they identify the event or condition if yes what is the plan what is the plan management what is the plan of management theek hai ask the management what is their plan easy easy if they have not performed the assessment ask them how the hell come on take the feel how the hell you prepared the financial statement as per going concern basis if you have not yet performed the assessment how did you prepare your financial statement as per going concern basis and the second question do you know about some events and condition do you know about some events and condition that may affect the entity's ability to continue as a going concern does it make sense yes sir and as i told you you need to stay alert to for such events and conditions now sir while evaluating the management assessment you will cover the same period as covered by the management 
If management has covered less than 12 months, ask them to cover at least 12 months from the date of financial statement. Now, sir, comes the additional procedures. Very, very easy. Very, very easy. If you identify some event or condition, whom do you reach out? Management. They have already performed the going concern assessment, so they must have also identified certain events or condition. Yes, but our management is useless. Our management is useless. They have not performed the assessment. So request them. Request them to perform the going concern assessment. Now, when they perform the going concern assessment, will they come empty-handed or with something? They will come with a plan. The plan should be feasible. It should improve the situation. But sir, plan is not enough. We need something more. We need some financial figures that you will get in a cash flow forecast. Now, for cash flow forecast, you need to check the reliability of data. You need to check the appropriateness of assumption. And after this, there has been a long time. There has been a long time that the management did the going concern assessment. So, after this point in time, there may be some additional facts and information that you need to consider. And at the end, what we will take? Return representation. We will take written representation about the plan, about the feasibility of the plan. Then we discuss some additional procedure. Please read through them. Now comes the auditor's conclusion. It is the same thing that we studied in responsibility part. Conclude whether today going concern is appropriate or not. If yes, go to the second stage and see whether there is a material uncertainty. Material uncertainty means two things. There is a likelihood, there is a magnitude. There is a likelihood, there is a magnitude, then that means the chances are high. Plus, if it occurs, it will majorly affect the entity, it will financially affect the entity. If it is affecting the entity, users need to know about it. Users need to need, know about four things. Four disclosures need to be there. So, what are the four disclosures? Events and condition. Plan for those events and condition. Then, they need to write there is a material uncertainty and because of this material uncertainty, Entity may not be able to realize the assets, discharge the liabilities in normal course of business. These four disclosures need to be there. You got my point or not? Yes, sir. Now, sir, if material uncertainty is not there, but events and conditions are there, then you just need to disclose the events and conditions. Other things are not required. Now comes the favorite part. Very, very easy part. That is about your reporting. Very simple. Just go in a very simplistic format. Going concern basis is inappropriate. Till the management has prepared the financial statement as per going concern, what will you do? Are Baba, what will you do? Sir, we will give an adverse opinion because the impact is both material as well as pervasive. Give an adverse opinion. If the going concern is appropriate, but material uncertainty is there, what we want? Sir, we want disclosures. We want disclosure. And let's say disclosures are there. If the disclosures are there, don't modify your opinion. Give a unmodified opinion. But now you want to draw user's attention. Now you want to draw user's attention. So you will add a emphasis of matter para. You will add a emphasis of matter para. Achha. Achha. You will add a emphasis of matter para. I already told you. We don't add a EOM para. We add a murg para. <laughs> Sir, murg para? Yes. Material uncertainty related to going concern. Material uncertainty related to going concern. This is the para you had to draw the user's attention, telling them about the material uncertainty and saying, Our opinion is not modified. Our opinion is not modified with respect to such matter. Got the point or not? Yes. Now comes next point that is, adequate disclosures are not there. If the adequate disclosures are not there, obviously you will modify your opinion that is qualified or adverse opinion. And when you are giving the reasoning that is the basis for qualified or adverse opinion, simply say material uncertainty is there, but the disclosure is not there. Come in, come on. Material uncertainty is there, but the disclosure is not there. This is how you need to explain your basis for adverse or qualified opinion. If the management is unwilling to make the assessment, consider its implication on the audit report. Sir, what if there is a significant delay in the approval of financial statement? It could be an indicator that entity's going concern is affected. Then we discussed about these events and conditions. Very easy. Talking about the financial events, just divide and rule. Liabilities, losses. Liabilities, losses. Sir, what was the point of liability? Net liability or current liability position. Long-term borrowing, short-term borrowing. Long-term borrowing is approaching the maturity. But you cannot repay, you cannot renew, you will be gone. Talking about the short-term liability. 
which is the famous short term liability creditors you did not pay the creditors on time they withdrew their support now from credit to cash on delivery your transactions have gone now talking about the losses substantial operating losses negative cash flows no dividend adverse financial ratio now talking about the operating indicator supply chain loss of supplier let's say the supplies are there but there is no labor labor difficulty educated labor is also gone that is the loss of key managerial person no replacement available for the same now comes the next point let's say they are also there production is also there now we go to the market market is not there loss of market loss of customer licensee franchisee where have they gone they have gone to the competitor they have gone to the competitor that means emergence of a successful competitor will you continue the entity or not no sir we will also liquidate the entity management's intention to liquidate the entity or seize the operation classic now comes the last point and sa 570 will be done 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 sir what is the point other indicators other indicators a simple story there was some non compliance with the csr requirement ah, ah, ah. there was a non compliance with the csr requirement what is csr capital statutory regulatory oh oh, oh. Hey, say with me capital statutory regulatory once more capital statutory regulatory once you non complied with the same it will lead to legal proceedings in those legal proceedings there will be claims that the entity will not be able to satisfy now the entity prayed hey god please change the law the law was changed the law was changed but again it adversely affected the entity and it was very very sad it wanted an earthquake it wanted a flood that is a catastrophe now the catastrophe occurred but did not have the insurance entity did not have the insurance that is under insured or uninsured catastrophe so these are the four points and your SA 570 is done, 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 done in 12 minutes. 12 minutes full SA 570 revised in detail. I hope you enjoyed this session. Now, you all deserve a break. How many minutes break? 15 minutes break. Okay? So just relax, refresh and let's catch up after a break of 15 minutes.